Hey everybody, this week's R&R show is brought to you by Z-Man Games. And hey, Ruel, how you doing? Good, how's it going, my friend? We're going pretty well. Uh, I, I, I love the outfit. Uh, um, it's not hey, May the 4th, yeah. though, so I'm not sure what's going on. You know, it's it's not May the 4th, but it is uh, chilly the 30th right here on the, when we're recording this. It's uh, a little chilly in the house. In Southern California, the sun is out and shining, but inside the house itself, it's it's a little cold. So I decided to go with my favorite Wookiee uh, hoodie. It does keep me warm, and it keeps me out of trouble because no one messes with the Wookiee because you will get your arms ripped out of your but sockets. Sir, no one ever worries about cheating with a droid. Or whatever it was. Um, that was terrible. I was horrible. I apologize to anybody. And I guarantee folks in the chat or you know, comments are going to be coming. Where did you get that? If you know, if you remember. Oh, where? Yeah. This was uh, gifted by Michelle many years ago. I honestly don't know. Some department store locally might have had them on sale. Um, I know it was right before all the um, the uh, sequel movie trilogy, all before those oh started my gosh. coming out. So you've had that yeah. for decades. Well, not not no. I, I should say oh, the, 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 oh, the, the sequels. I, I I heard prequels in my head because sequel. sequels. I don't yeah, know what yeah. sequels you're talking about. Oh, you mean yeah. Last Jedi, which is the, the last. The, oh, yeah. yeah, the Last Jedi and uh, Force Awakens. Before they came out, uh, Michelle got this, so I wear these to all the uh, premieres of the uh, new uh, newish Star Wars movies. All right. Okay. Well, uh, folks, as far as I know, we will not be talking Star Wars movies today. Instead, we're going to be <laughs> doing a top ten upcoming Kickstarters. I've got five. Ruel has got five. But before we get to that, we have some other business to attend to. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Let's do first this. of all, do you have a question for me? Um, we haven't done this particular a... segment for a while, so you'd be forgiven if you don't remember. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, I uh, my mind has just gone blank. What is well, going on? This is your cue to ask me. Hey, Rado, what's on your table? Hey, Rado, what's on your table? Oh, I'm man, glad you has... asked. Well, well. thank yeah. you. Oh, that right. was really smooth. Um, Wasn't it? No, 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 nobody noticed anything. Everything's going fine. Just uh, keep plowing We're, forward, no matter yeah. what happens. Um, well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, this is uh, Infinity Gauntlet, a love letter game. And, oh my gosh, my camera has crashed. Well, that's okay. It's a really nice image of it, but I, I can't show you oh, stuff. Yeah. So, uh, this, uh, I, I'm sure you played Love Letter. Right. Yes. Everybody's played Love Letter, the, uh, the the game of bluffing and second guessing, uh, a lot of game with just a tiny deck of cards. Uh, Infinity Gauntlet adds a bunch of stuff, and uh, really the most interesting thing about it is it's a one versus all. One player plays Thanos trying to collect all the uh, the Infinity Stones, and all the other players are playing a co-op game as the Marvel heroes trying to stop Thanos. And, uh, you know, each side has different win conditions, and all the same love letter goodness is still there. It's still all about trying to figure out, um, you know, what's in your hands. But now you have to figure out what's in your teammate's hand as well as your opponent's hand. Uh, Thanos has two ways to win, either knock out all the heroes or get all the Infinity Stones, and then the player is literally supposed to snap their fingers to indicate that they've won. And uh, it's really really sharp. Uh, honestly, this is the only way I'd want to play Love Letter, uh, quite frankly. Yeah. And uh, just yeah. because there's so much more. Have you played this version? I have. have. It was an instant. Yeah, it's it was an insta hit um, with Michelle and I. Now Michelle's not really the biggest Marvel fan, but I am. And then the second I play, it's like, yeah, this. I love that one v all, and it does it does feel that you know Thanos is trying to collect those Infinity Stones. It's a nice little uh, touch to the game. Um, this is uh, we have we played a, several of the love letters, and this is for me personally by far my really favorite. more so than Batman. Yeah. A lot of people say Batman is the best. I Batman, I have. Um, it's okay. Here's the thing about Batman. I really enjoyed it, and I bought it for my nephew, mm -hmm. and then it went out of print, and I've never seen that copy again. I don't know where my nephew's hiding. <laughs> we it, shall not speak. My of it nephew, again. I want that copy, or I want to play that uh, game again. I, I Batman was really fun, but uh, I mean Thanos. I mean, you got all the superheroes. You got you're battling against Thanos. It doesn't get much it, better it than is, that. It is and, excellent. Yeah. Um, it's a lot from of fun. sponsor of the show, Z-Man Games makes a great stuffing stalker. Stuffing stalker. So, uh, no stuffing. Other I can't way say around. the word. Stocking stuffer. Stocking stuffer. Although it also makes a good stuffing stocker. Uh, if yeah. you need some yeah. stock and some just a little bit of extra oomph to your um, turkey stuffing, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah. yeah, that was what was on the table. Uh, the next segment is where we give you fine folks at home the chance to win a cool game for uh, tuning in. And this week, I am very excited about the game. It's called Free at Last. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's already hit its funding goal. And it's a cooperative board game uh, exploring the civil rights movements of the uh, 1960s. 
that can also be played solo. Uh, it is a game of, you know, it, it, at first glance, it kind of reminds me of, you know, a, a Twilight struggle style approach to making history come alive with all these cards that have you know in-game functions but are also based on real world historical events with real pictures and um but the nice thing is we're, we're working cooperatively to pursue uh the goals of you know the civil rights movement and it seems very very cool i'm really excited about this and uh i you know so I, so much so that i uh, reached out to jim and said hey uh, I'd love to boost the signal of this game a little bit. Uh, would you mind? Uh, would you be interested in giving away a copy to one lucky winner on the r, &R show? And he said, yes, that sounds fantastic. And uh, so I'm really happy to see it's already doing well. Hopefully it will continue to do well. And um, it's, it's going to get published. So one of you of lucky viewers can win. Well, how do they win? You know, the way you win, folks, is... We have a secret phrase that we're going to say sometime during the mm -hmm. show, and you just pay attention. Once you hear that secret phase, phrase, take note of the game that we're talking about at that time, and you're going to type in the name of the game in an email to contest at rotto.com. Right. And again, you're talking about the game that, you know, when we say our secret phrase, what game are we talking about? That's what you send, and you'll be entered to win a copy of Free at Last. And, you know, what? I got to say something. Yeah. This is the first I've heard of Free oh. at Last. I, this looks fantastic. Yes. This looks great. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 I somehow, I mean, it's definitely flying under the radar. It has not yeah. getting as much attention as it should, uh, because I mean, I, I think, I think it's incredibly laudable. It's interesting. Jim, the uh, publisher, was telling me one of the backers is actually related to um, some of the famous people that are on the cards, and so she, oh, wow. I mean, when she reached out. She was incredibly excited about it too. Um, you know, and obviously, wow. tons of research was done to you know bring history to life, but also just make a fun and uplifting cooperative game where everybody can work together. Uh, I, I'm very excited about this game and i hope everybody else is too especially the person who will win so as it says on the screen as ruel said contest at rotto.com uh whatever game we're talking about when we say the secret word that's what you should say it but ruel um it's not a secret word this week is it that's no, right it is, it is a not. secret phrase folks it's a secret phrase and you know we're talking about free at last you know uh the end of the 60s the end of the tumultuous 60s there was a song that was released around or that time an as album well an yes. album, yeah, a song, oh yeah, an album, sorry, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. song, album, uh, an album by the Beatles um, called Abbey Road. Right. So that's what you're trying to listen for, Abbey Road. Somehow, some way, we're going to work it into the show, yep. and whatever game we're talking about at the time, when we mention Abbey Road, type in the name of that game to that uh, email, uh, uh, contest at rado.com, you'll be entered into a contest to win free at Yes, last. exactly. So um, it's as simple as that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, we're both watching the, uh, the you know the Beatles retrospective from Peter Jackson on Disney Plus. So Abbey Road, yeah, you know, I mean, right. all this stuff is uh, kind of you know fresh in our mind at the moment. So yeah, uh, and just uh, just a reminder, Abbey Road is spelled with an E, so A B B E Y. Thank you, thank Road. you very much. Two words, yes, yes Abbey Road. Um, personally, my favorite Beatles album of all time, Abbey Road. Really? Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? I'd have to think about that. That's really hard. My top three. I'll give you it real quick. Okay, Abbey Road. Um, Revolver and the White Album. Those three right there. Well, I mean, of course you have to throw a White Album in because that's like three albums worth of album in there. Right. And, you know, <laughs> in like 15 different genres. Uh, that's an interesting one. That might be a good topic of conversation in the extended version of the show. Which, by the yeah. way... And speaking of the extended version, what is that, Well, Rado? basically, in case you didn't know, if you just watch this when it goes live on Wednesday, the day before, uh, Ruel and I get together and actually stream the show live. And while we're there, primarily on Twitch, to record you know, an hour-long show where we count down 10 games that you're about to watch, uh, we do a bunch of other stuff as well. Lots of interaction with the audience, uh, lots of special event type stuff. And if you're interested in checking that out, there's a link down in the show notes, or you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen and basically go to the R and R show extended cut. The extended edition. The Peter Jackson edition, basically, where we don't leave any, we don't put anything on the cutting room floor. And uh, the show's get twice everything. as long. So uh, if you want to check that out, um, you, you, you can still get all of this show plus a whole bunch more. But um, I think that's enough of that. It is time, Ruel, to talk about our new top 10 um, crowdfunding upcoming games, right? Yes. yes. That is correct. Okay. And. Um, I'm going to start this week. Are right? you? Yes, I believe you are. You are at number 10. And um, while you're queuing that up, I got to say, I didn't think there was going to be anything to talk about, quite frankly, because December is a dead zone, um, traditionally. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's just nothing going on. And um, But I, I did find some stuff 
It's either happening this month or early next year. Although, you know what? Before we get to the list, we have to uh, mention a couple that are very near and dear to our heart, of course. One of them, uh, let's see, I should have had this queued up, is, um, let's see, where is it? Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to go and show you an advanced sneak peek video of it, folks, if I can get there. All right, where is it? I need to go to YouTube. Uh, It's, oh, I can't think of, uh, of, of the name of it. It is Palaces of Carrara, Second edition. Oh. I, I I don't know if you if you've ever played Palaces of Carrara. It came out almost a decade ago from Kramer and Keesling, and uh, many mm. consider it to be one of their finest games. And it's also for a lot of people a Grail game because it's been out of print forever. It got a very small English print run, and it's just been forever hard to get hands on. So yeah, um, it's kind I know of- the reputation of this game. It's I, I have friends that have played it. They loved it, and. Um, I've never been able to play it because it's out of, been out of print for so long. So this is exciting news. Yes, oh, it's Second very exciting. Edition. I'm really stoked about it. Uh, I've already filmed the run-through. The run-through will be going live when the Kickstarter goes live itself. Awesome. Uh, sometime, I, I, I want to say the 6th, but I'm not quite sure about that. Um, there's a link for it. By the way, every crowdfunding game we're going to be talking about today, folks, there's a link for it down in the show notes. So you'll either be able to you know go to the page, uh, the Kickstarter itself, or the pre-launch page. And, and that includes uh, the Palaces of Carrara page so you'll be able to find it and uh, it's great Uh, they've added a bunch of new stuff and here's something very important to know you won't hear in a lot of places Uh, they have added a bunch of new features and some of the old features are now available as kind of like a little mini expansion promo which costs five bucks extra it's like a little promo bag of extra cards it's the objective cards from the original game but if you go to their game found page because they're on game found right now and follow it now when it goes live you will get that promo pack for free. Uh, anybody who followed the page before the Kickstarter campaign line gets the $5 promo pack for free, and I highly recommend this promo pack. Sometimes promo packs are, oh, that's kind of nice. Sometimes they're game-changing. This is one of those latter ones. I mean, it's well worth the Ooh, extra 5 bucks to okay. get them, but um, you don't have to pay if you're at all interested in Palaces of Carrara. And uh, so that was one of them. The other one, unfortunately, I have not done a run-through for yet. So let me just go over to uh, Board Game Geek and uh, go to its page. It's called Encyclopedia. And I don't know if you've heard about this one either, Ruel. I have not, no. no. It's weird. Uh, I'm not sure why. This is uh, launching in a few days. Can I spell encyclopedia? No, I can't. Encyclopedia, there we go. It's launching next week again, I think, sometime in the month of December. There's no pre-launch page for it yet, unfortunately, but oh my gosh, this game is cool. From Holy Grail Games and from the team that did Museum, it's a huge, gorgeous game, really lavish production, Mm. a dice worker placement game where everybody is contributing to what is widely considered to be the first encyclopedia. We're having to go out into the field and research animals specifically and then publish our results, all doing dice worker placement. But the interesting thing about the Dice Worker Placement is, this is one of those games where, oh, I see Ruel rolled a red five. That would be perfect for me. And Ruel knows it. At the beginning of every round, you roll your dice that you pulled out of a bag, and you put them in slots. And if you think someone's going to steal your red five, standing by, um, you can put it on I was a just sl- going to say yeah, it. <laughs> you, you can put it on a slot that will give you money or victory points, or expedition tokens, and you get to choose. So, um, you know, this is a game with some interaction, but uh, there were often times when I was playing this where, okay, I don't really want this red five. I'm really focusing on blue, um, you know, animals, and I'm going to put this Mm -hmm. in a place just hoping somebody will take it from me so that I can instead get the expedition token that I need to finish my own expedition. Really cool game. Gorgeous. It'll be coming soon. Uh, There will be a run-through for that also. So that's a a couple of games before we actually get into our top 10 that you'll be seeing this month on the Rotto Runs Through channel. Right. Okay. And uh, with that out of the way, do you have your number 10 queued up, sir? I do. I have it queued up. It's going on the screen right now. Uh, so these are our top 10 crowdfunding upcoming games. Mine is number 10, Goblin Uprising. Really? And okay. Yes. Goblin Uprising from Dream Valley Studios. Uh-huh. Tell us um, about it. I'll let you. Yeah. So Goblin uh, Uprising. Uh, this is, uh, I, I, I was immediately just drawn by the theme. So the theme is, you know, in typical fantasy your adventurers usually go beat up on goblins, right? For, you know, points or easy points or easy loot or whatever. Goblin Uprising, you and your uh, players actually are the goblins. Oh, so okay. You have, 
you've had enough. You're not going to take it anymore. And um, you and your fellow goblins go are going to go out, and this is an uprising. So you're going to go fight. There's a big baddie that you have to deal with. Uh, you will level up as a goblin. Um, if you check out the min I mean, some of the miniatures okay. that are on this page, yeah, are it's unfortunate. Uh, somebody there. should tell them when they embed a video on their page, they should leave the thing that lets you make the video full screen. Anyway, let's go on oh, ahead no. and look at the pretty pictures. Oh, oh, that is yeah. pretty. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So all these cool little minis, you know, and um, you, so we're fighting against the taller races, uh, and uh, as which is really neat. Um, so we're the little I, I just ones love the going up against the, the big ones, yeah. Yeah, little people going against big people. So what you're, you're just trying to defeat the, the tyrant, right, in the middle of the map, um, and the first goblin to do that will win the game. But what's cool is you're going to be able to level up your character, you know, um, through the different missions and different combat that you do. You'll, you can equip them, but then the tyrant in the middle is going to change throughout the game mm. so as you uh, do certain things it may you know get a little stronger in some areas a little weaker in other areas and then by the end whoever defeats it it, it can be defeated different ways each game is going to be different so maybe this a uh, one time you're going to have to defeat it you know bring its uh, hit point uh, hit points all the way down to zero or whatever other times you may need a legendary weapon to do that and yet other times, maybe the a tyrant is just going to drop dead and the last person standing is going to win. So um, I'm interested to see this uh, in person. I, I would like to see the minis and everything. Uh, again, it's uh, it's actually not on BGG yet. They're, they're going to be launching this at some time. I don't think they have a date okay. yet. Okay, so it's coming um, soon. I love the theme, Goblin Uprising. That's my number Actually, 10. the coolest uh, thing about it, you kind of buried the lead. These uh -huh. aren't the monsters. These are your guardians who join up with yes. you, little rogue here, can be given a big old bear hug the whole episode with yes. Lawrence, the Emperor. That's really neat. Is that yeah, neat? That, is, that is very fun. So, okay, did yeah. you put this on the list just because of the miniatures? Um, I may have been attracted by the uh -huh, those uh -huh. miniatures. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just love the fact, because I've never played as a goblin before. Sure, you know? sure, so sure. I, yeah. I like, Getting to play the other different. side. You know, let, let's, let's try this out. So that's my number 10, Goblin Uprising. Okay, that is a pretty little game. And I didn't know anything about the, the miniatures and the uh, the kind of toy factor. That does look yeah. uh, very, very fun. Okay, nice call, nice call. Well, then you, you. let's move on to my uh, number 9. If I can get to it. There we go. And I hit that, and then I press save. It's octopus's garden um and now here's the deal here's the deal the name of this show folks is top 10 upcoming kickstarter games right and the thing is the thing is last night when i was pouring through 500 plus games on the uh kickstarter upcoming website you, you can look for upcoming stuff uh octopus's garden jumped out at me and i thought wow that looks really cool and yesterday it was not it was upcoming this morning it's actually live. Oh, it went it live. went live this morning, and wow. it's not my only one. Uh, there's a, I think uh, this is, yeah. It, it, there's actually another one of mine where, hey, yesterday it was upcoming, but it actually launched today. So again, oh like gosh. everything else, there will be a link for this down in the show notes if you want to check it out. This looks like a very a gorgeous looking little abstract tile laying game that actually came out uh, over a decade ago, I think. And so they're bringing it out again and giving a big spit and polish, new art and all that stuff. But the core gameplay sounds really neat. You've got this grid of tiles. You have to pick a row or column of three and you must take all of them. And as the game goes on, more and more bad stuff will appear there and if you want the good stuff sometimes you got to take the bad stuff and then lay it out into your own little um coral garden and one of the things i mean I, you've seen kind of stuff like this before but one of the interesting things is starfish if starfish start showing up they're alive they will actually move around in your garden and try okay. to eat your oysters so um you can bring an invasive species into your own little octopus garden but that invasive species is worth a lot of points in and of itself as well I suspect Jen is going to love this game because she has yeah. recently made it clear to me that she loves beautiful, clever little abstract games. And that seems like exactly what this is. Um, really nice production value. And I watched the intro video and he talked about how they might have some... It's the basic game from 10 years ago, but they've got some new design modules that they'll be unlogging with stretch goals and stuff like that. So when I saw okay. this, and apparently you can play it right now on Tabletopia or read the rules if you like. So good on the publisher. But uh, yeah, uh, this one, I, I think it could be pretty cool. I'm breaking the rules. Apologize to me to uh, Becca Scott uh, for my number nine, <laughs> Octopus's Garden. 
Yeah, th this one. So uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the very first time, what uh, Rob and I do, we submit our um, various, our top 10 list to a third yes. party who then, you know, puts it together for us. And this one was one of those uh, crossovers because this was on my oh, list was? too. Octopus's Garden. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, same same reasons. Michelle is a big fan of these abstract, you know, cute games. And I, I would love to play this. And, you know, it's... It's it's a Beatles song too. Come on. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Of course, we're gonna play. It, yep, yep, you know? yep, yep. Um, <laughs> Good choice. Okay, okay. That's your number nine. Let's move on to my number eight. Yes, sir. Um, let me do this over here. So my number eight uh, Kickstarter game that I'm looking forward to is the Bad Karmas and the Curse of the Zodiac. Okay. So oh, really? right off the bat, I just I feel like this is this would be a great name for a band, <laughs> the Bad Karmas and the Curse of the Zodiac. And that 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 did draw me in. But you know what really held me is that this is a really interesting combination of analog board game with digital um, uh, dimensions to it, mm -hmm. right? So it's a tactical boss battle game. So you know you and your uh, fellow players are trying to uh, defeat the big baddie, the big boss. But you're going to be using these things called smart miniatures, and the app is going to be able to read their stats and give you. It's going to help keep track of everything, along give you it enhances gameplay, right? With uh, artificial intelligence for the enemies, that has visuals and graphics and sounds, everything that that you know. We were just, you know, I, I'm just, I, I'm just so excited about the fact that we can play this, you know, tactical board game and have all these extra goodies. Uh, where you know you're gonna really you know enhance the experience. Uh, so what you're doing, you're just you're fighting and you are using the app to track your movements. And as you can see there, you have that uh, smart miniature there. I've never seen that where a miniature has like a little light up things. So I don't know how it works. That's why I'm really excited to see this uh, in actual uh, gameplay. I want to see like when you move. I want to see how it you know updates and I'm assuming in real time, um, you know, as you go on the board there. So it's what for one to four players, about a you know forty to sixty minute game. So I think it, it falls in that line of hey, this is going to be something really cool to play, um, where it doesn't take up the entire day, and hopefully the um, uh, of the technology is um, implemented smoothly. And um, that's why I'm really looking forward to. The Bad Karmas and the Curse of the Zodiac. Yeah, well, it's interesting you should mention you're hoping to see it because you might be seeing it from me this month. I didn't mention it oh, up front really? because we're still trying to work it out. They've contacted us. I might be covering it, even though the Kickstarter isn't going to be happening until next year. Yeah. They uh, might be sending me out an early prototype of this. And it's you know it's not okay. just the pieces. It's not just the board. It's the whole Taburu system. Uh, because if, for folks who don't know, this is just the... Uh, the you know, Taburu is a new... Uh, digital board game platform from Cool Mini or Not, where you lay out an electronic table on top of your table, and it can register where you put the pieces. It can actually be, you know, it can update and do all kinds of cool stuff. It's it's the central element of this, and I believe Bad Karma's is kind of like the lead game for this new board game platform. I am really intrigued. I love nice. the overlap of digital and um, analog. That's a big, big uh, attraction for me. So, if all goes to plan, I might be uh, giving this a little bit of screen time before the end of the month. Awesome. Uh, fingers crossed for me. So that is an excellent right. one. And uh, cool. yeah, cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I should put it on the list because I wasn't quite sure, but uh, yeah, great. Yeah, yep. yeah. So right. maybe you'll be seeing more of that coming soon. So that was your number eight, correct? That is correct. So let's move on to your number let's seven. Let's do that. Let's move on to my number seven, where once again, I broke all the rules. Ruel, <laughs> to talk about voyages. Because again, I promise, less than 12 hours ago, um, this game said it was coming soon. I had no idea yeah. it was launching today. Uh, it's already uh, gone well over its $133 goal. It's a $6,000 right now. And this is a really oddball one. Totally, I, I I think I've seen some other projects doing this before, but I think this is the big highest profile. This is a um a a, a, a download only board game. It's a roll and write, uh, and it looks really, really cool. Let me talk about the gameplay first before I talk about anything else. Uh, you've got your sheet of paper. You're trying to travel around, you know, uh, uh, a, a map full of islands and treasure and all that stuff. Every round, you roll three dice. One of the dice you choose determines what way the wind is blowing. One chooses what, uh, how far your ship can move in that direction, and you must move exactly that many steps. And one unlocks, uh, it's kind of like almost a little crossword puzzle 
thing that you're trying to uh, get other uh, upgrades for your ship and whatnot. So every round, you're going to have to make a tough choice about where do I want to go, what upgrades do I want to get as I run around trying to complete objectives on this unique little map. Uh, it's a, a 20 30 minute game. As many people can play as you have time to print it out because if you back this game for the high, high price of four pounds sterling, which is like, what, uh, $6, maybe $7 US? I'm not quite sure what the transition is. You will get to download this first map and a second map and the rules. And now here's the interesting thing. Um, you don't. Ha there is no gambling in this game at all because uh, if you want, you can download this first map and the rules right now. They're giving it away. Uh, so really, what you're paying for is an ongoing subscription to their platform. You will get a second unique map, and on top of that, as the uh, as the the game continues to evolve and uh, whatnot, uh, when they make new maps, you'll be able to get those and download them for free. Now, the big thing is for a lot of people, it's a non-starter because there is no box. There is no collection of dice. There's no little pins that are going to dry out. This is just, you print this out yourself. You use dice. We all have dice. This is a game that is the ultimate in trying to provide players with a really fun and evolving experience because, hey, if, if you buy in, we'll just keep giving you more stuff. You're not stuck with what came in the box. We can expand this game as time goes on. And um, you're also helping save the planet because there's no, well, you're, you're printing out stuff yourself. Now, the interesting thing is some people, uh, there was actually a nice little section here, well, what if I don't want to print it? What if I don't have a printer? Well, you can go down to a local print shop and get yourself a laminated copy. Or, you know, that's certainly one way to go. Or you know, a local school. If your kids go to school, they probably have laminators there that you could print it out and just get permanent copies of it. Um, they also suggest uh, these little apps that you can use on uh, you know on a web browser or on an uh, an app and uh, what do you call it a. Uh, a tablet that basically yep. lets you draw on pictures. And honestly, I didn't know Sketch.io or this uh, iPad and Notes app existed. I could see a lot of use for that kind of stuff in the future. So, um, oh, yeah. you know, anybody can play this. And, I mean, right now you can play it for free. What you're really paying for when you put your money in is, you know, future expansions and also, you know, excellent value for money, but also, most importantly, supporting independent game design and sustainable distribution models. Yes. That's what really pulled me into this. I love this. I mean, it's really interesting. In the RPG space on Kickstarter, oh my god, there are so many billions of RPGs that are constantly being released. And it is very, very common for them to be released as, um, what do you call them? As, uh... Uh, you know, digital PDF downloads, and nobody thinks twice about it. But in the board game industry, it's kind of uh, you know, uh, you know, un unheard of. I really love this idea, and I hope it succeeds. And it shows publishers, look, there is another way that you could do this, and there are advantages to going this way. So I really doff my cap to the publishers, and I'm glad to see that you know it's only been live for like a couple of hours, and it's already pulled in six grand. So that I think that yep. means there are a lot of people out there who really appreciate what they're doing. I certainly do. I was excited about it yesterday when I. I heard about it for the first time after I spent two plus hours looking through everything and I said oh my god this looks amazing <laughs> if I'd looked a little bit longer I would have seen it was launching today because it's live right now if you want to check out my number seven uh voyages yeah so just to um continue on that I'm so excited about it uh, as well that I actually backed this did you oh so you had no idea yeah, I was gonna I put this on here I had no idea. And uh, yeah, the conversion rate, I think for US, it was about $6. And, you know, they, they made a great point in their uh, Kickstarter campaign. There are two things that it changes. It changes, it, you don't have to worry about manufacturing or distribution. Mm -hmm. Right, because everyone's going to have that file. You just print it yourself, or you put it on your iPad. You could draw on the iPad these days with that Notes app, um, or you go to the local shop. Or what I'm going to do, I'll probably just print out here at home. And then, uh, we have a laminator because my wife Michelle, she's a teacher, and as you know, most teachers have laminators. That's uh, the that's thing. What I, I was learned saying exactly. Yeah, very very handy. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I love Roland Wrights, and this one it, it looks like a good one. By the way, the one of the designers, I don't know if he's the lead designer or, or partner, uh, Matthew yes. Dunson. He also has a Twitch channel as well. I've seen him on Twitch before, and he will just go live and talk about his uh, design. Oh, he goes deep as he's designing games. Yes. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, so. Great choice. All right. Great well, thank choice. you. Uh, except, I, again, I totally broke those. And the reason I keep saying I'm breaking the rules, folks, in case you don't know, Ruel does another bi-weekly uh, Kickstarter show called Good Looking Kickstarters. That uh, you know, he's so he's uh, he's two timing on me with Becca Scott, but that's okay because <laughs> I really enjoy the show. And that show generally focuses on stuff that's live right now. And so we all kind of agreed that hey, when Ruel does stuff with me, we'll do stuff that's coming in the future. So that's why we focus on yeah. upcoming Kickstarter games. And uh, I kind of, I kind of. 
blew it this morning. I'll be better next time, I promise. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that was good. my number uh, seven voyages. What's your number six? My number six is uh, something that should be familiar to a lot of mm-hmm. uh, viewers mm-hmm. here. My number six is Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide yes. game. And I mean, come on. It takes two amazing franchises, the Zombicide franchise and the Marvel Universe, mashes them up. Um, if you don't know, Marvel Zombies, so not only, it, it was recently on the What If show mm-hmm. that's on Disney+. Plus. Uh, what if, you know, the Avengers were zombies, right? And that was actually based on a comic book uh, series years ago called Marvel Zombies. I, I think that's the name of it. But basically, it's the Avengers, they're zombies, oh boy, look out what's going to happen. <laughs> and you're going to be playing as those heroes in this. Uh, there's not much information no. Yeah, but I mean, look and at just one picture. There. That's it. That's all we get. That's all you need. That's all you need. You know, and I love Zombicide. It's been a, a perennial favorite um, with myself and my fellow gamers. Uh, not er- everything hits. I mean, I like the uh, the one that went in the be- uh, the fantasy one. I think it was Green Horde. That one was really good. So was Black Plague. Some of the mall stuff I was like, okay, pretty standard. But this one I'm excited about because I mean, it's got Marvel zombies. I, I want to play as Zombie Captain America. Come on. So yeah, do you, you think a, players uh, will play as the zombies? I, I think so, or I think you because I know, like in the comic books. Well, there's, yeah, there, yeah, there, there are like, some heroes who have not been bitten. Some that are, and um, I would yeah. assume we're gonna play. I mean, I'm just basing this. It looks like Captain, or you know, like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange are still good, but Captain America, Captain Marvel, and Hulk yeah. have gone bad. I bet you we're still so playing. Maybe, good yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, yeah, I just saw that. I got so excited. <laughs> I want to be Captain. Captain America zombie, but yeah, maybe you're right. That's probably the way you do it, but who knows? I mean, there's not much information yet, but you know, it's from Simon. Come on. It's going to be a big hit. Uh, it's, oh, it's going to be a monster hit. Do you think this is going to, it's going to be a monster. I, I, you know, yeah. I, I, it's going to be a zombie hit. Do you think it's going to cross what? How, how high is it going to go? Definitely will go over at a million. Least, Probably will go over two million. It, you think it'll cross three? I'm thinking at least three or four. Yeah. Three or four million. I, I, I can't yeah. argue with that. I think it, I mean, this might yeah. be one of the biggest uh, board game Kickstarters ever. I wouldn't be surprised it, it could if be. it eclipses. Yeah. Um, what what are the big ones? Uh, Frosthaven and uh, Frosthaven, yeah, yeah. Gloomhaven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I, again, it's it's going to be a huge hit. I'm looking forward to it just because the the uh, I'm a Marvel fan, as you all know. So that is my number six, Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide game. Yep. Yeah, that's a, so that's again, folks. Uh, Ruel seems to be all about the miniatures today. Not that I want to shame him. There's reason. nothing wrong with that. I mean, at the end of the day, we are playing these things to have fun. What's wrong with a li- exactly. with upping the toy factor or you know turning the toy factor to um, you know to the nth degree? Um, right. And I right and 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 I I, I I kid I rib. I'm not immune to a pretty looking game either, which is my number five, Heroes of Might and Magic three. Oh. Um, I, I, yeah. Uh, I played the bejesus out of Heroes and Might and Magic 1 and 2. And while I never actually played 3, um, I, as I understand it, it was, it was more of the same. These are originally video, computer video games, which are all about um, you, you being a brave knight, traveling the countryside, looting all kinds of stuff, get, picking up uh, things left, right, and center, and building up an army that will help you fight off all the monsters of the land. And that sounds like perfect uh, subject matter to turn into a board game. And the interesting thing is, this is not the first time we've gotten a Heroes of Might and Magic board game. I covered one over half a decade ago. And uh, it was pretty, it, it, it did a pretty good job of capturing the core magic, uh, of, you know, the kind of the obsessive, oh, I just got one more turn, I'll get more stuff, I'll fight, fight, fight. But it was way long. And I mean, and the thing is, it really completely stripped out all of the, the particulars about the tactical battles. Now, there is very little information. Pretty much there's just a web page with showing some very pretty art on cards and some really nice looking uh, miniatures and then saying, hey, sign up, sign up. And again, there'll be a link for it down in the show notes if you want to uh, sign up for, you know, get, get notified when this goes live. So I don't know anything about it, but again, both my wife and I have such a deep, deep abiding love. I can still hear the horses uh, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop sound as they move <laughs> around the world. Uh, you know, it's just like brazed in my, uh, you know, burned in my brain. So I am always excited uh, about the idea of bringing something I have such a strong feeling of nostalgia for. And yeah, in terms of video games, I mean, Heroes of Might and Magic, that's a very, very high watermark for me. So that is my number five. Yeah, none of us are immune to the toy factor. I mean, it's just, yes. yeah, that's good I, I, stuff. I wanted right, to think nice I was toys. better than you, but I'm not. I would also <laughs> like a bunch of toys to play with, please. Please. 
Nice number five. Yeah, Heroes of Mind and Magic. So let's move on to my number four. Um, let me update this here. It is yeah <clears throat> my number four. Oh, okay, is Explorers of the Woods. Alrighty. So I we just got done talking about uh, Marvel Zombies. Um, I probably neglected to say that it's uh, you know a classic um, dungeon crawler. Here is yet another dungeon crawler, but look how cute this is. This art is, Come is on. phenomenal. Right? As as the kids would say, it's totes adorbs, right? Totally adorable. Um, I, I don't know if the kids I, I, that, I'm pretty sure it, maybe your kid said that when she was seven years old, maybe, over a decade <laughs> which ago. Is, which is many, many yeah. years ago. <laughs> but, you know, I, I love the look of this game. It's a cooperative dice game slash dungeon crawler for one or four players, so it does have a solo mode, which I'm a big fan of. Um, you're going to explore this world. Uh, you're going to the forest, and it has tile placements. So you're laying down tiles, but it also has some dice placement as well. So you're, everyone's rolling dice, and on your player board, you're going to select, hey, what where the dice go, what actions you're going to get. Uh, it'll unlock unique abilities. You'll move. You'll do special actions. You're going to acquire those loot, that loot and eventually kill those monsters in the forest. Um, everything about this just, I, I, I keep going back to the word adorable mm -hmm. because it just looks mm -hmm. adorable, folks. Yeah. I mean, come on. And this type of game, um, you know, I, I think, again, of my family. How am I going to get uh, games to the table? Whereas, like, a typical dungeon crawler, they, they most likely won't play Marvel Zombies. I will with my game group. But Explorers of the Woodlands, something like this, will get to the table because they'll, it's a really easy entry point for new gamers or more casual gamers. Um, that's Explorers of the Woodlands. I saw this it's, one, and I was definitely totally. interested in it. I just couldn't quite find enough information about it because this is upcoming. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of hedged my bets a little bit to see if I would put it on my list. But yeah. I mean, from what I read about it, it does seem like it's it goes a little bit above and beyond, oh, just walk around and roll some dice and hopefully you roll well right. and conk monsters over the head. Uh, that It looks yeah. like it might have gameplay that lives up to those visuals. So I think that was a good choice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and one thing I, I did notice that really that really you know piqued my interest, it does have a five to six mission campaign, so it's going to have that campaign mode as well, which I always find neat in games. So it'll add to that replay ability. So that's my number uh, four. Explorers of the Woodlands. Well, then you're probably wondering, what is my number three? It's a little game called Hacktivity. Isn't that a clever title? Oh, Hacktivity! You know, like it's an activity title. about hacking! Um, <laughs> and uh, I've just got right now, I, I've just got the uh, Kickstarter pre-launch page. As you can see, I have saved it. I am one of the uh, 231 followers for this game right now because I am definitely interested in it. Um, there's, you know, there's not that much to see, much like yours, but there were a couple designer diaries I found for this on BoardGameGeek. And I was reading those, and I was very intrigued. This is a cooperative deck destruction game. It's the opposite of deck building, because mm -hmm. in this game, you are given, as part of setup, a big old fat, two big old fat decks. One full of really good, helpful cyber hacking cards, and one full of really nasty cyber virus cards. You know, because this is obviously a, uh, you know, a Netrunner type world that we're running around in. I think we pretty much live the entire time in cyberspace. We don't do, spend any time in meat space, as near as I can tell. But the interesting thing mm -hmm. is, on your turn, we are working cooperatively trying to empty out these decks. Um, we, we have this deck, and we need to kill everything bad in it and get rid of it. So we're not building a deck up over time. We're narrowing it down and winnowing it down. But the thing is, at the beginning of your turn, you've got these two decks you draw from. You, you draw three cards, and it's your choice. You could draw three good cards from the good deck, or three bad cards from the bad deck. If you think you're like, okay, I'm really strong right now. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. Let's just go all heavy, all bad. Oh my god, why did I do that? Ah! Or uh, I'm really weak. I better stay away from that. Or you know what? I'll, I'll take two goods and one bad. I really like that idea. That, that as yeah. a core idea, sounds very, very cool. And, you know, the fact that we're all working cooperatively towards it's like, oh, this is a terrible idea, but hopefully you've got something that will, you know, help me out. Um, again, I can't tell much about what you're going to do. Uh, there's only been two uh, designer diaries that have come so far, but I've definitely subscribed. I'm going to be reading more about this. But I love that core idea. It kind of reminds me of a very popular game from last year called Paleo, where you were going through a single deck and you were finding good and bad stuff in that deck. You were never quite sure what you were going to get. You're kind of pushing your luck. How deep into the deck am I going to go? Here, you have a lot more control. I just love that core idea. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm almost dead, but we're out of time. I'm going to draw three bad cards, and I hope you can save me. I, I can imagine those kinds of really cool, exciting moments might be the norm in my number three, Hacktivity. 
Nice. Love All it. Right. Yeah. Love that. Love, love the theme. And um, yeah, that, that I think that's really interesting. And we'll see. Hopefully we'll get some more information soon. Because that does sound like something yep. that would be my jam as yep, well. Yep. Uh, so that's your number three, Hacktivity. Let's move on to my number Let's two, which is, I mean, we're going to stay in space for my number two is last resort mm-hmm. um this <laughs> you know I, I i saw the the name of it last resort i i don't know if uh, this reference is, will fly with you but that band papa roach uh there was a song called last resort i have no idea what you're yeah, talking I don't know about you yeah i mean it's not like it's not like a classic album like abbey road from the beatles but i mean it was a song that was popular in the 90s but anyways all that aside <laughs> Last resort, you are in space. The theme just got me. You are a proud owner of a defunct space station, and you want to turn it into a trendy space resort. You know, so you're taking this old thing and making it new. And I can, I just imagine my head. Hey, we're gonna, you know, put it in a casino. We're gonna throw in, you know, space space bucks at it and see what happens. Uh, at its heart, it's a card drafting game, and you're gonna be uh, playing different cards uh, to try to attract tourists to your place, right? And there's four uh, different um, things that you're trying to uh, compete with your uh, fellow uh, space station owners. Uh, you want to lead the categories of thrills, entertainment, relaxation, and inspiration which are four things i think of when Indeed. i go to a space yes. resort right <laughs> so you're going to generate income and uh buy you know you're going to buy new tiles lay those out um rockets with um tourists will show up and your job is to entertain them and allow them a good time at your last resort out there in space i, I thought it was just funny uh it just it really grabbed me for some reason again look at the look at the graphics that they have yep. there. isn't that cute Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, here's the thing. This game was actually on Kickstarter earlier this year. It took me a little bit to find, but I was trying to go oh. to the original Kickstarter page because I knew they had to track videos and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it's, it's oh. a funny track video. There we go. Finally, show me the game. Folks, when you're making <laughs> Kickstarter track videos, don't make the viewers wait three minutes until you show the game. The game is your strong Agreed. suit. You're, you know, the, nobody wants your comedy and stuff. People want to see the game. They want to know about the game. That's why they're here. Tell them that. Sorry. Just went on a little mini rant there. But um, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it didn't fund on its first one, but they, you know, they, the developers have vowed they're coming back. Um, so I actually thought about this one quite a bit. I really like the look of it. It's uh, got a very, very interesting overall vibe because every round you're going to play a multi-use card. That multi-use card uh, tells you three things. What new types of tourists can come to your space hotel? What current tourists you are going... Or what... Um, accommodations that currently have tourists in, you're going to kick them out of. And then a third thing that I don't remember. So you're going to have a tough choice every round trying to balance. Okay, well, I need this type of one, but I need to get these other people out of the berths and I want to get that one emptied out. But that card, which will clear them out, will not bring in the new types of tourists I want. So... It looks like it has a very, very clever central mechanism. Uh, it looks like it has really great production. I watched a couple of very, nice. very uh, nice videos. Uh, Lizzie, congratulations. You had a really nice uh, job on covering it. So yeah, I was really interested as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it failed to succeed, but you know, as is often the case, and we've seen this uh, enough times, you know, they, they make the first attempt. Uh, it doesn't quite catch fire, but they get a lot of good, valuable feedback from the audience saying, well, here's what we would need to do, what you need to do to yeah. get us to back it. So I am excited to see it come back stronger than ever before okay nice that's good to know i did not uh, know any of the background of that that's good to know and um hopefully they've made readjusted and they're ready for a successful launch this time mm-hmm. around so that was okay, that was so your number the, two was it not yeah let's see the number okay one folks on you you've uh, you made it this far there have been a few missteps along the way sorry about that <laughs> uh we're doing our best we're doing our best folks oh you're doing fantastic. thank you thank you, you very much fantastic. my number yes. one ruel is a game again the there's not much known about it it's dom pierre uh and uh you're really i mean right now there's 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 one picture of the box art there's almost no description of the gameplay and i mean i mentioned before that you know in cases like this i like on some of them i kind of held back i'm not sure and i'm glad you you mentioned like the, like the woodlands one i mean I more information publishers please get your get your potential audience excited don't wait until the last second start building an audience now but anyway so dom pierre kind of guilty of the same thing so why did i put it on my list Two things. Publisher, R&R Games. R&R Games is on fire. They are really on top of their game. Uh, This year, they've produced several really good games. I really think they've got a good ear for games. They make good choices about what they decide to publish. So the R&R label, uh, no coincidence, no relation to the current show. It's not like they're slipping anything under the table. Although, really, we should we should totally get them as a sponsor for this show. Why is that not happening? I feel like that's like the ultimate sponsor. Why is that not happening? perfect. 
That is Taylor. Indeed. Made. Oh yeah. This week R and R brought to you by R and R. We totally have to do, make that happen. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, no, that never even occurred to me. Um, but. Uh, R&R aside, that's one thing. More importantly, though, are the designers. Uh, Rolla and Costa. Or as I like to call them, Roller Costa. Roller Coaster! I don't know if they're doing uh, that on purpose. There are a couple of young Portuguese designers. They've had a couple of really, or three or four, really good designs over the last couple of years. Cafe is maybe the best card patching game there is. Uh, it is certainly one of the best. Uh, mixing and matching, card patching with um, engine building. Uh, you can watch my run through of it. Uh, I think it made my top 10 of the year it came out. More recently, they put out Yinsi from Spielworks, if I recall correctly, which is a really big, heavy economic simulation uh, about pre industrial China and the silver trade. Uh, it looked, you know, uh, Ming Dynasty, if I recall correctly. Uh, I, you can watch my video of that. I covered that. Uh, Six Castles was a really bonkers, one of the most quirky tile layers I've ever played. You can watch my run through about that. So I've been a fan of uh, Rolla, uh, Rolla and Costa, and this looks like they're big. Biggest game to date. Um, you know, I, I expect good things. Them working with R and R. What is the game itself? It is a. Uh, uh, it's a, it's an economic simulation about wine, or not wine, champagne about the champagne. Uh, you know, and actually the most interesting thing that was on Board Game Week I could read was actually a little bit of history about how champagne came into being because it turns out it was a mistake. And at first they thought, what have we made? But then it kind of caught on. The bubbles <laughs> were, were, weren't a bug; they were a feature. And so uh, I love the attention to history that came across there. And I expect, uh, from what I've seen of Rollin and Costa before and from R&R Games, this will be a very, very good game about growing the grapes and harvesting the grapes. And, um, you know, we've seen other games doing this, but if there's one thing about Rolla and Costa, they their brains work differently. None of their games, and I've played four of their games now, I believe, ha uh, do anything in a standard milieu. So this will not feel like one of the others, like, you know, your viticultures or your vinoses. I suspect yeah. this will be very fresh and different, and I am very, very excited about it, which is why it's my number one Dom Pierre. Wow, All right. that looks fantastic. Yes. And I love the R&R &R tie-in. That's just yes. perfect. Yes, <laughs> yeah, well, well, um, we have to make that happen. R&R, &R, wherever you are, I'm, I'm sending thoughts out to you now. Um, my, but that's my that's voice. it, folks. We have done another show. Uh, hopefully, you found something of interest uh, amongst all that stuff. And most importantly, if you would like to win a copy of Free at Last, which, I mean, you know, even if you're not going, even if you didn't spot the secret phrase Abbey Road whenever it was said, um, you know, if you just go check out that game anyway. I mean, it's yeah. it's a shining example of what our industry is so well situated to do. And um, you know, the more successful it is, the more other developers will be encouraged and inspired to bring us more really interesting, fun games that are also at the same time, you know, they, they enrich our soul as much as they tickle our gray matter. And so I'm very, very excited about that. So if you know what game that one of us said Abby Road in, uh, email to contestatraw.com, name that game in the subject header. And otherwise, I I, I think a uh, job done. Am I right? Can you think of anything else? Yeah, you you we we did it again. We've done it Fantastic. Again. And yeah, we uh, you know what? After we log off here, I'm gonna go listen to some Abbey Road. Okay, yes. And that we were not talking <laughs> about a game there, so that wasn't the entry, folks. It was during the top uh -huh. ten. Nice try. You're trying to trick the people. Okay, folks. Yeah. Well, thank you as always, Ruel, for being the best co-host in the industry and, and thanks to z-man games for sponsoring the show thanks for watching everybody talk to you later so long uh bye bye